when I started teaching in Vietnam, one of the levels that I found very difficult and very exhaustive was my grade 9 students. They were terribly difficult to control. Reasons. Maybe I made so many wrong choices and that was when I started. So it came to a point that that class was taken from me because I couldn't control the class. They went out of my hands. They were doing what they liked. They were talking whilst I was teaching. They were chit-chatting. And even when I wanted or when I threatened to punish them, they would just batch out of the class. If you like this content and many other content of mine, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video and share the video. Doing this motivates me to do more interesting and educative videos. It became clear that I couldn't control the class. I couldn't manage the class. And one of the other reasons that I had was that these kids were in um, a countryside. They were in the countryside, meaning they had not had a shot at English for a while. Even, if, even though they had English teachers, these kids didn't have anyone to speak English to. I think I was their first foreign teacher. And so it was difficult when I, I, I talked. These kids could not understand or hear me. I mean, everything was so bad. So going forward, when I lost that class and my center also lost that school, I had to revise my lesson. And then my next class, I couldn't even get another grade nine class for a very long time, for about two years. And I finally got some grade nine classes. This time, I decided to do things right. I decided to correct all the mistakes I did. And this is a problem that a lot of teachers are facing, are going through in Vietnam. A lot of teachers, especially when they are in the countryside, the issue is so terrible when they are in the countryside. Now, these are some tips that can help you manage and have the best out of your grade 9 classes. Grade 9, 10, 11, whatever. Whether in the countryside or in the urban centers. Now, in the capital, in the city, it's very easy because these kids understand what you are teaching them. They understand what you are saying. But in the countryside, they don't understand. They'll be like, you say what? You say what? Teacher, you say what? Teacher, lie, 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 lie. It means they don't get what you are they, they don't get what you are teaching them. Now, sometimes if you have a TA, it's a bit okay. But if you don't have a TA, that is a big trouble for you. Number one, tips to get this done, teaching in a high school, especially in the countryside. Let the kids understand the purpose for which they are paying to learn English and for which you teacher you are there. Let them know and understand that purpose. In fact, in your first day in class, try as much as possible to speak to them through a TA. That's if you have one. If you don't have one, try and translate what you want to speak to them on your phone. Let them hear and understand you clearly and perfectly. Do this. Let them know that there are a lot of opportunities for Vietnamese students to study in Australia, to study in Canada, to study in America. And a lot of Vietnamese are not grabbing these opportunities because they can speak English. And so, if they can just calm down and learn English, they can grab these opportunities and turn their life around. Make the kids know the reason why they are there. Number two, tell them about the reason why they are paying for an English class. This is because the government school is, let me see, 95% free. These community schools that this, the students attend are 95% free. And so they don't pay anything. I mean, some of them pay, but like I said, it's 95% free. So let them know why their parents are paying extra money for English class. Let them know and let them understand that if they're not interested, it's better they get out of the class or they pull out of the English class. Reason is, if you don't do that, these kids are going to disturb you throughout your entire teaching period. Now, in teaching in the public school, there are three categories of students. Number one is people who have, who can listen when you speak and can speak a little like, hello, how are you? And they can explain. There are others who can speak, but they are determined to learn. And there are the rest who are being forced by their parent to study English. Now, these are the kind of kids, the third case are those that give you a lot of trouble whilst you are teaching in, Viet in this Vietnamese high schools. And if you don't deal with them, they are going to give you tough time for the rest of your life. They'll be talking, they'll be, they'll be, they'll be, they'll be, they'll make the class unteachable for you. So advise them, let them know that their parents want the good for them. And that's why they are paying extra money for them to learn English. However, if they think they're not interested, 
they should walk out of the class. Do this and nobody will walk out. Now, if they don't walk out, what that means is that they are ready to abide by the rules and regulations of your class. That brings me to point number two. Point number two is that let them know that you are the teacher of the class. Stand on your authority. Let them know that you control the class. They do what you tell them. Now, apart from doing that, let them set their own class rules. Rules to discipline them. Now, one of the things I do to discipline these kids, I mix the male student with the female student. So, if you go to the classes, you will see that most of the boys sit differently from the girls. The girls sit in different places. The boys sit in different places. You know, these ladies have some weird perception. I don't know what they think, but they don't want to mingle with girls. And so, one of the easiest ways to punish them is to let a boy sit close to a girl. It's one of the terrible things, terrible punishment to give to them. And so that is one of the ways, I, initially I tell them, you can sit wherever you want, but if I see you are talking, if I see you're not paying attention, I will change your sitting position and that you shouldn't complain. Do you agree? And they will say yes. Sometimes I translate, sometimes I tell them through my TA and it works perfectly. So, stamp your authority. Now, after they setting the rules, after the class, the students setting the rules for the class. Now, when it happens that anyone abuses the rule or anyone goes contrary to the rule, make sure you stamp on your authority. Make sure you apply the appropriate punishment to that student. It's very important. Don't be forgiven because if, especially in your first days, in your early days, if you assume a high school class in your early days, don't be so forgiving. Make sure you stamp on your authority. This is because if you don't do it, the kids are going to take you for a weak person and they are going to abuse that right every time. As, as time moves, you won't be able to control them. You lose touch with them. And once you lose touch with them, you can control the entire class because they know that, oh, teacher will not, he can't do anything. Now, on that same point, make sure that everybody participates in your class. Make sure every student participates in your class. How do you do that? When you call them to the board to come and say something, make sure the one you call comes to the board. Ensure, I mean, go to, go, ensure that that student moves to the board. And the same way, if you are changing a student, if you are changing the certain position of a student, make sure that that student abides by that or complies. The student who is reluctant to that, you can walk that student out of the class. Do that. For the first time, ask the student to walk out. If he or she is not going to sit where you are putting him, let her walk out of the class. Just try it and she's not going to walk out. When she sees that all her friends are seated and you are asking only her to walk out, she wouldn't walk out. Other times, you find some extremely violent student who will be ready to walk out. Don't worry. Let them walk out. That will set as a precedent for all of the students. So make sure that you are the teacher, you control the class, they do what you tell them, especially according to the punishment that they have outlined or they have given out. Make sure that student takes that punishment. When you walk into any high school, first and foremost, find their weakness. You should know their weakness. Knowing their weakness will know how to help them better. Most of the case, so I have been to some um, countryside schools and in every class that I go, I introduce myself like my name, where I'm from, how old I am, uh, what I do in my free time, the food I like best. After doing this, I try as much as possible to speak to all the kids. My first encounter, everybody is going to talk. Everybody is going to speak. I talk to them mention their names i mean the basic conversation your name where are you from um what food do you like um what do you do in your free time basic conversation multiple multiple different different everybody i do that to know the speaking level of the student now don't forget that your major purpose as a foreign teacher is to teach them how to speak that is your major focus in the class as a foreign teacher all these public schools already have english teachers who are teaching them the grammar, the whatever, the syntax, the whatever. So you, the foreign teacher, 
your your number one responsibility is to teach them how to speak that's it and so make sure that you you allow you help the kids practice more because kids right after your class only get to speak vietnamese so when you are teaching them make sure that they speak english make sure you practice more and more and more and if you like this content and many other content of mine don't forget to subscribe to the channel like the video and share the video doing this motivates me to do more interesting and educative videos now the next point is that when you have this high school kids try and be jovial as a teacher try and be jovial this is because most of these kids are teenagers and you know how teenagers behave all over the world they believe as if they behave as if they are grown they are grown-ups you know all of those stuff and so that is not where to exhibit your um your, your your techniques for teaching kindergarten or primary to them they won't mind you example like trying to play some childish games some games reserved for if you want to give them games then you should give them mind-boggling games games that can help them think games that you know that kind of those sort of games and try and learn a few vietnamese it helped them you know a few vietnamese i mean here and there especially if you don't also have a, a ta that can help you example like example like uh, sit down bonsoir uh, stand up um uh goodbye diva uh come here learn d some few vietnamese uh how old are you baba uh these are a few vietnamese if you go to any high school class and you ask them what's your name and the kid cannot speak and they start giving you, you hear them you hear them clapping and when you go further and you go like uh baba meaning how old are you oh a teacher vietnamese vietnamese meaning teacher can speak vietnamese and kids get to love you if you if you're able to speak this basic vietnamese and try and be Try and create jokes. Try and don't be so rigid. Don't be so no. Be funny. Be exciting. For instance, I can just go for me when I'm in the class. Most of the time when I'm introducing myself, most of the things I say is that in my free time, I like to play, I like to play free fire and link one. And so them hey, teacher plays free fire. I don't play free fire. But when I go to class, as part of getting them involved, let, 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 making them know that I know them, I'm part of them. I tell them I play Free Fire, and they will, be, they will all be shouting. Free Fire and Leng Kwan is a popular game in Vietnam. I mean, for most of the teenagers, that's what they play. So when you tell them you play Free Fire, they are so happy. The food that you like, I like pho, I like pho, I like uh, ban chu. They're like, you know. Let them know that you know them, you are part of them, you are part of the society. How old are you? Teacher, how old are you? Um, uh, Balam Toy, Balam Toy, I'm 35 years. And you are so happy. So do this, and that's not all. Try and be entertaining in class, be active, be entertaining, and create other jokes. I mean, try and, I don't know, but go around, look for, I mean, anything that will make them happy. Ensure that they participate in class. Ensure that they participate in class and uh, reward those who participate in class. In the countryside, one of the best rewards, what doesn't cost you anything, is giving them your signature. They call it chuki, giving them your signature. So once I go into any class, especially in the countryside, I mean, high school, uh, teacher, uh, uh, meaning they want signature. I'll tell you, okay, if you can answer, I'll, I'll give you a signature. And I give to those who are able to excel in the class, who speak, who are active. I give to them as a way of motivating them. There are other motivations you can also use. And don't forget to include games to your class. Like, there are a lot of ESL games that you can get, like, go online and type ESL games online. I mean, games that has to do with uh, a word. They mentioning the name of words and, um, you know, new words and all of that. The hangman, all that things that you can use. You can also create your own games. If you have... Um, site like world war i mean you can create your own sentences basic conversation you have taught them over time so they play game with it and that's it now one thing you need to take note working or, or teaching high school kids is that be careful of the girls be extra careful of the girls now these kids are teenagers and you know teenagers everywhere you know how they behave some of them would like to get close to you as the teacher because you're a foreigner they don't know you you know, some, sometimes uh, they want to get closer to you. But the fact is that 
if you allow some of the, or a particular student, one or two, to get close to you, the rest will start talking. Know how to maintain a distance. Know your choice of words to use. I mean, words that, uh, that, 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 seem to, that seem to suggest love or something. You know, I don't know, just get away from all of those things. Because you may not be doing it. I know you won't do it. But by the time you realize, they'll be saying it and it will be up there. And I was even fortunate that they told me. They told me because they love me. They told me because maybe I'm in a country so they couldn't replace me. And that's why they told me. In other areas where they have a lot of foreign teachers, they'll just kick you away. You wouldn't know the reason why. You'll just be kicked away. So that's it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Subscribe now. One more thing is that always try to have conversations. What I do is that when I start with them, when I have this conversation, hello, what's your name? How are you? Where are you from? What nationality are you? I fill them all into a game. So every day before I teach another lesson, I make sure we revise all those that we've done, all those sentences that we've done, those basic sentences, before I even move on to the new lesson. How are you today? No. If you don't do that and you are in a rush to move to new lessons, you lose all that you've taught them. And I mean, what's the essence of their class or teaching a class for two years and anybody can just walk into the class and ask them, where are you from? They can't speak. What nationality are you and they can't speak? It means you've done the course 90 job. So always make sure that at least your kids can speak basic English, basic conversation. It is more important than rushing to teach them those things, all the things in their syllables. Sometimes they may be irrelevant if their kids cannot speak basic conversation. So guys, these are my, my simple facts about teaching high school kids, grade 9, grade 8, grade 10, 11, whatever, blah, 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 that I think has helped me in these years.